Kalaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Buckingham Palace, the official residence of the British monarch since 1837, may carry historical weight, but it isn't exactly the coziest spot for the royals who have lived there. Royal author Hugo Vickers describes the palace as cold and impersonal, a mix of staterooms, offices and hotel-like bedrooms, rather than a homey environment. In fact, Vickers points out that the royals often communicate through their offices, leading to a situation where family members might not even know who else is in the palace at any given time. When empty, it reportedly feels more like a prep school during the holidays than a royal residence. Originally built as a townhouse for the Duke of Buckingham in 1703, the property was acquired by King George III in 1761 as a private residence for Queen Charlotte. It became the official London residence for the monarchy when Queen Victoria ascended to the throne in 1837. However, Victoria preferred other royal estates like Osborne on the Isle of Wight, Balmoral and Windsor. King Edward VII and George V were partial to Sandringham and George VI spent most of his time at Windsor. Queen Elizabeth II, though, Buckingham Palace was her primary residence, favoured Windsor and Balmoral, rarely spending nights at the palace in her final years. As for King Charles, he prefers Clarence House. Charles uses the palace primarily for formal events, meetings and state functions, while Clarence House offers a more intimate country house feel in central London. Though it might not be a beloved family home, Buckingham Palace is still a marvel, featuring 775 rooms and London's largest private garden. Its state rooms, adored with a blend of Belle Epoque and Chinese Regency styles, opens to the public for tours during specific times of the year. Edwin and Sophie recently paid tribute to the late Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip during a visit to Villa Guadamanja in Malta, where the Queen and Philip lived as newlyweds from 1949 to 1951. The villa, currently undergoing restoration, holds special significance for the royal family as it was a peaceful chapter in the Queen and Philip's lives before her reign began. During their visit, Edward and Sophie recreated an iconic photograph of the late Queen and Philip, taken at the villa in 1949. The couple stood on the villa's roof to pose in the same spot as Elizabeth and Philip, marking a touching homage to the royal couple. Sophie even paid a subtle nod to the Queen's style, wearing an outfit reminiscent of the late monarch's attire in the original photo. The couple also toured the grounds and viewed an exhibition of photographs of the Queen and Philip set up in the villa's garden. They shared a quiet moment together near a derelict fountain, reflecting on the personal history of the property holds for the royal family. Edward recounted memories to Elizabeth Pule, whose mother, Jessie, worked as a housekeeper at the villa during the Queen's time there, noting that his mother never forgot Pule's mother after spotting her in a crowd during a later visit. Sarah Ferguson has launched a fundraising drive to secure £600,000 to help women with breast cancer. She will serve as patron of the Manchester-based charity Prevent Breast Cancer. Sarah, writing in The Sun, tells us, When you're told you have cancer, you can't help thinking it's a death sentence. Your mind goes to the darkest places, and you wonder what lies ahead and how you're going to share the news with your family. That was certainly the case for me last year when a routine mammogram detected breast cancer, something I had always dreaded. I had almost missed the appointment as I couldn't face a journey into central London on a hot summer's day and thought I would put it off. It was only when I mentioned this by chance to my sister Jane, who had called me from her home in Australia, that she went into bossy older sibling mode and insisted I went. That checkup and the treatment I underwent saved my life. I'm living proof of the importance of never skipping screening appointments and always getting symptoms checked out properly. To make matters worse for me, I was then diagnosed last year with malignant melanoma, the most aggressive form of skin cancer. I'm sure it was caused by my exposure to the sun as a fair-skinned child in the 1970s when no one knew about the importance of sun cream. One cancer diagnosis is bad enough, but two in quick succession is a lot for anyone to handle. It has been a difficult period, and I'm not out of the woods yet. I am reconciled to the fact that I will have checks for the rest of my life. I'm now determined to do whatever I can to raise awareness by sharing my experience. 
Prevent Breast Cancer uses science to save lives and is the UK's only charity dedicated to the prediction and prevention of breast cancer. Since 2010, they've funded over £4 million in research projects. Now, working together, we are aiming to build a new National Breast Imaging Academy. The Academy will aim to address a workforce shortage in breast screening with lots of radiographers and radiologists set to retire in the next few years. Prince William is taking a firm stand on homelessness, insisting that it's crucial to change and tackle the narrative around homelessness. In a tease of his upcoming documentary, Prince William, We Can End Homelessness, this 22-second clip shared on social media announces that the program will be available soon on ITV and ITVX. The documentary will chronicle the prince's first year with his Homewards initiative designed to address various forms of homelessness across the UK. In the video, he shares his passion for the cause, stating, People live with it. We see it every day in our lives. That's something I want to challenge. The prince acknowledges the stigma faced by homeless individuals, saying, When you're at your lowest ebb, you believe, quite understandably, that people don't care and there's nowhere to go. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Sophie McGowan, the founder of British jewellery brand Earsass, has revealed how Kate Middleton's support has led to an incredible surge in sales, allowing them to raise £15,000 for mental health charity Brave Mind. The boost followed Kate Middleton's wearing the brand's Issy Star earrings, a design created in memory of Sophie's 17-year-old niece Issy, who tragically took her own life after battling depression during the lockdown. In May last year, during a visit to Maidenhead Rugby Club, where Issy had been a player and coach, Kate had an emotional meeting with Issy's mother, Sarah Renton, and was presented with the earrings. Kate later wore them during an event in Birmingham on World Mental Health Day, which led to a global sales boom for ESS. The proceeds raised have gone towards funding mental health education and suicide awareness courses in schools, universities, and sports clubs. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. And you can write us a review or leave some stars if you're enjoying the show. Don't forget, you can get this show commercial free along with hundreds of others from Calaroga Shark Media, including murder shows and ghosts and romance shows and comedy and spirituality. You can all find that at calaroga.com. That's C A L O R O G A.com. Or check out the show notes. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott, Palace Entry, Good Times. Mm-hmm.